All right. It is now 8.33, and I'm going to call this meeting to order. Please be advised that this meeting may be conducted virtual and or live stream on Trempolo County website as well as the WTCO. This service is being offered when possible to provide members of the public access Trempolo County government functions. The public is always welcome and to attend any public meeting in person. Members of the public will have 15 minute block of time to co comment on today's agenda items. Members may be present in person or call in to make such comments. To comment by telephone, please call 715-538-1894. Again, that's 715-538-1894. Public comments may be extended or certain at the discre discretion of the committee board member and after advisement of the committee board. Um, certification of open meeting law requirements have been met. I would like to obtain a adoption of the agenda. So move. Or second. second. All right, we have um, um, Richard as the first and Don as the second. Adoption of um, the April. Oh, I need to uh, vote. Oh, I need to vote. <laughs> All right. All right, let's take a vote on this. Um, everybody in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The adoption of the uh, uh, let's see, adoption of the April 17, 2023 minutes. Make a motion to approve. Second. All right. We have motion to approve by first by Dawn, second by Richard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. All right. First of all, number five, we're going to start with the reports. How about the digital media update? Yes. So I, uh, I'll start off with showing everybody the awards. Um, we finally got them. Uh, I think we met right before our conference, and we had our conference in early May in Madison, and that's when I picked these up. So I'll kind of show you them all here. We've got this is our Relay for Life ceremony. Uh, we got an award of achievement um, by Titus Buell. So that's right here. And we're gonna hang these up too, so you'll be able to see them later. Um, I plan on having them hung up probably by the end of the week, uh, right next to our studio. So there's the first one. The second one is one that Rick and I worked on. It was the Bruce Valley Stream Bank Restoration video. So here's an award of achievement. We won. And then we have our Excellence Award. And this is by Mary and Nancy for their History Files series. And they also won Best in Show, uh, produced by seniors. So here is their um, Award of Excellence. It's a blue instead of brown. And our last one. So this is our another award of excellence for the Miss Whitehall and Little Miss Whitehall pageant um, by Titus, our intern last year, or summer LTE position, I should say. So another blue one. Let's see. And like I said, we'll hang these up on the walls outside for everybody to see. Good deal. All right, so yeah, the conference in Madison went very well. I used it as a way to talk directly to our vendors, uh, fix some of the issues that we had um, with cameras, software, and our TV guide. Um, I'll be heading to Madison again in October with WCM to discuss with our legislatures the importance of our role in community media um, in the community. Um, a really positive note, our TV guide is back up and running on cable, so you can see our TV guide we had to kind of work through some issues with TCC changing providers for their TV guide. Um, the only small issue we have is some of our titles get cut off um, on our TV guide. Uh, but other than that, it's back up and running, so you can at least see what is playing currently, and you can actually record it if you have DVR on your TV. So that's extremely um, exciting, and a lot of uh, hard work paid off on that one. So we're really happy to get that finally done, so I was extremely happy to go to 
that conference and have all of our vendors that are you know providing us with this equipment to be face to face work with them it's just so much easier than email or calling or video chat or whatever it's just so much face to face is more important than anything just to get it done and so i was extremely happy that they're willing to work with us and get some of these issues fixed and We've been working on our uh, closed captioning as well, trying to monitor that and figure out why that crashes occasionally. Um, we figured out the PTZ situation with the NDI licenses. So it was great to fix a lot of things that we were concerned about, um, especially the TV guide, which has been an ongoing issue um, since TCC switched uh, providers. So really good trip to Madison, um, just even for just that reason alone. Um, we also have uh, lots of compliments on our Memorial Day ceremony coverage that was just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that was uh, really exciting and great to see people were receptive to what we did. Um, in July, August, and September, we'll be covering a lot of events in the surrounding communities. So I'm also excited for that. Uh, a lot of things coming up with like the fair and different uh, communities having their different days of the year. So. Excited for that and get some good coverage again this summer. So that's all I have. Awesome. Good work. Thank you. Great. Mr. Chair, can I make a comment? Absolutely, you can. I yeah. think. Um, oh, we're doing homework. <laughs> yeah, come sit down, grab a mic. Great. I just wanted to point out that um, a lot of people in the county take our. TV coverage for granted. Um, Kevin, how many counties have a TV studio in the state? Uh, we're the only one. So we're outstanding in our field. Uh, I think it's a um, very positive way to communicate uh, with the taxpayer and, and others in the county. And uh, I think we should give Kevin the appreciation he's due and you know excellent work thank you yeah we're the only like i said the only one it's kind of funny when they mention uh community media they usually say municipalities or city government and uh sometimes I have to remind them hey you know we're, we're we're county as well and sometimes they'll say like our city and one county <laughs> uh, uh community media so it, yeah we're very unique very unique in this area and uh it's if I would work any at any other station, it would have to be a city uh, government. We were the only ones. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for all your hard work. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> all right. We will go over to the museum update. She's not in. Okay. So we're going to hold off on that one. All right. How about the educators? Who are we going to start with today? Miss Andrea. What? <laughs> what? No, there's other educators here. <laughs> we don't see them. <laughs> They're hiding. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's there's one. There's so, I have quite a bit of stuff that I put in this month's or bi monthly packet. Um, my summers are my busiest time of the year. Uh, last week, just to s give you a small taste of what I do, Monday I was here for about half a day and then I went camp shopping over in Winona. And then Tuesday I was here putting out food stand fires and then I had a night meeting in Jackson County. And then Wednesday I was over at camp um, in Pepin until Thursday and then I took Friday off. And then on Saturday I was in Arcadia doing a program. So that that's... I, I don't want to say that's a typical week, that's a pretty busy week, but that's, if you don't see me for a little bit, I'm, I'm probably in lieu <laughs> or I'm hiding because I'm tired. <laughs> so I don't have that in here because it happened after I made my report, but um, just to summarize some of it, I'm working with the La Crosse County educator to plan a leadership day for both of my counties and then her county. Um, it's something that I've wanted to plan, but I wasn't quite at the point where I'm like, I think I can do it on my own because it was a, kind of a big ask. And she's like, hey, do you want to do this with me? And I'm like, it's like, you read my mind, Emily. Yes, we can do something like this. So I'm hoping to do um, like a bylaws review for clubs. We're going to do some parliamentary procedure workshops for both youth and adults. Um, it's going to kind of be like a typical 
I, I say typical as if everyone knows what I'm talking about, but like just a, a training day for people to understand more about the 4-H organization um, since they're in leadership roles. Um, I'm really excited about it. I need to, <laughs> this is the hard part, I'm, I've been busy and I know I need to do it, but then I keep forgetting I need to do it when I have time to do it. I know, Pat, I'm, I know, you can look at me like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I need to call GET school and see if they're available. If not, I'm gonna call Holman because that's kind of a nice medium spot for both of us. Um, if not, um, I also helped work with the Summer Academy team, which is currently happening right now, right now in UW-Madison. Um, Summer Academy is brand new, but it's kind of on the tail end of, if any of you remember, Youth Conference for 4-H. Some of you may remember it, some of you may not. They kind of rebranded it, and it's like a phoenix. It's coming out of the ashes right now, making a new reemergence. Um, it's now really focusing on like post-secondary um, career paths, and so kids get to choose what's <coughs> called a track and explore career paths within that track. So I helped plan the agriculture track, and we focused a lot on like food science and um, different types of ag precision jobs and stuff like that. And so we really worked with our um, uh, one of our colleagues down in UW Madison, Bernie O'Rourke. She she works for the university, but she has a small percentage of extension um, percentage that she does. And so we worked with her to get like spaces and tours of stuff. And they're going to tour like the Meat Science Lab, which is brand new at UW Madison, and it's really cool. And I haven't gotten to go yet, and I really want to go. So if anyone wants to go with me, they can come. Um, <laughs> also, like the dairy, um, they have a dairy farm and a bunch of other things, which is all if you've never been down to Madison. It's right there, downtown Madison. Like, it's not out, out of the city limits. It's within the city limits. It's kind of an interesting place to see dairy cows. So beyond that, I've done specific stuff for Jackson County. I'll tell you guys anyway, because then you know kind of more about what I do beyond what I do for Tremplo County. Um, I recruited a dog project leader, which she's actually from Tremplo County, but <laughs> Lori Guza, she, um, our dog project leader in Jackson County suddenly said, you know, I'm not able to, I have family matters that I need to address. And I'm like, oh, great. And then I kind of was approached by Judy Becker, our other, our very good dog project leader here in Tremplo County. And she's like, hey, I think Lori might be a really good fit for Tra Jackson County. Do you think you'd be interested? And she actually is doing a really amazing job. She's got like AKC registered cattle dog. She does um, barn hunt with them. Like she has a wrap, I don't wanna say a wrap sheet, that's not the right word, but she's got a long list of things that she's able to do with dogs and teach kids about. And that's exactly what I look for in a dog project leader. So she's taking that project on, which is amazing, because truthfully I feel like out of all the animal projects that you can do in 4-H, I think that rabbits, cats, and dogs are the things that anybody can access, because for the most part, you either know somebody or you have a dog at home that might need some dog obedience, or you have a cat or a rabbit if you don't have one of those. But dog obedience is pretty easy and accessible, and I think everybody should do it. Um, so I did that with... All right, I was working on that, and it's actually been going on for a couple of weeks, and it's doing really well. Um, the other thing I did was I worked with Ron Keene, the UW-Madison poultry specialist, and I got a poultry nutrition workshop set up for the Jackson County Small Animal Project. It actually went really well. He talked a lot about, you know, what kind of stuff to feed your chickens and why we need to feed them specific things, and he went into detail about... You know, we feed this for yolk coloring, and we feed this for creating better, stronger chickens. And here's what not to feed them. So it went, it was very good. It was well attended. Um, a lot of parents asked, asked quite a few questions, and kids did too. So I was very happy with that. I also went to the Milk Duds meeting, um, and I just talked a lot about um, just my, my role and record books. And then I went to, I met with our, their new horse project leader. Um, so then to get into the Trumpel County stuff, which is a little more, I did a VIP for a new leader for the Ettrick Eagles on April 20th. I did an in-person YQCA session. Um, my goal for those, since I got back from maternity leave, I quickly planned that one, but I like to have those a little earlier in the year. 
And um, the feedback that I heard from some parents, because I've noticed this, not everyone reads my emails, nor do they always read my newsletter, which then disappoints me when people say, you should put this in the newsletter. And I'm like, well, but I just heard you say that you don't read it. <laughs> Youth for the Quality Care of Animals. So if you've ever heard of, no, you probably wouldn't have if you asked about YQCA, sorry. So it, it's mainly just to show kids um, how to properly care for your animals, how to make sure that you're learning more about biosecurity so that you know, you know what type of diseases you should look for, how to talk to your vet so that you have a good vet-client relationship, and um, meat quality safety. So, um, antibiotic resistance, how to know when to do a withdrawal time and stuff like that. It's, um, I, I'll call it a canned program where I don't have to do anything. I'm just given the materials and I'm told to teach it. But I, I really enjoy it because I went to school for ag education. So that is everything that is on those slides I already know something about. And I either have a personal story that I can share with the kids or I can answer their questions. So I really enjoy teaching YQCA. I'm hoping to do it sooner. I've gotten a lot of feedback that they don't like or that members in Trumpelow County don't like the online version, which I completely understand. It's not. I have never had to take it because I'm an instructor. But I, I like giving them the option to do it in person one anyway. Um, then the other thing, I did a livestock show clinic. I had about 15 kids involved, and it went very well. I'm hoping next year to have more species available. I, I would like to keep going with some sort of show clinic because I want to teach kids safety about handling their animals, but I also want them to kind of have stepping stones that they can do better in their project because if I don't, like, my whole job is to educate, and if I don't give them something to learn, what are they going to take away from the animal project? I mean, they might learn something on their own, but if I don't step in and say, hey, why don't we talk a little bit more about biosecurity? Like, if we just do a show of hands, how many people know what biosecurity is? I do. I work on a farm my whole, on off my whole life, so I know what that is. See, I mean, we only have a handful of people. I would love to have everyone's <laughs> hands go up, but it's something I'm hoping that we teach the younger kids so that eventually they teach their parents. That's the whole crux of 4-H. So the other thing I've been working on is the Junto summer programs. That's what I was doing on Saturday in Arcadia. We're, we're trying to get a Juntos club started again. Um, we've had quite a few kids involved. And if not, what, we, what I learned from Saturday is that um, there's ball tournaments <laughs> going on at the park. And there is a whole bunch of children. And what I eventually we'll try and do when I have time because you know new mom and everything I might just try and just show up with fun activities for kids who are looking to not um, watch the ball tournaments because we had a bunch of little kids that just came over and they're like what are you doing and we're like well we're painting pots oh sweet <laughs> and they're just painting their pots and they're they're making seed bombs with Jacob and they're doing all these things and I'm like oh this was super easy like it, for outreach standpoints that was very easy so I'll, I'll turn you guys to, uh, in your packets, I have some demographic data that I would like to share with you. So we were going over, um, at the state level, they kind of gave us some of the, the youth trends from the past couple of years, and I kind of wanted to show them because they kind of showcase like pre-COVID, COVID, post-COVID. And I know I've heard a lot of people who go, well, 4-H hasn't come back. Like, we're not surviving. What's going on? Um, these, these numbers kind of show all, all the, oh my gosh, I can't speak. Um, these show that we, we have made a comeback since COVID. Um, it, it really goes over like the youth enrollment and the adult, adult enrollment. I will say that adult volunteer enrollment has gone down a lot, but that, adult volunteers are also really hard to recruit because you have to do more training and you can't just say, oh yeah, I want to be in the 4-H program. And you're like, great, I'll take you. There's background checks, there's training that they have to complete. Like I don't, I don't just take anybody for reasons of child safety. So definitely take a look at these if you haven't already. Um, for the most part, I will say like these are very good numbers and we, we're in a pretty good spot here in Trempolo County and I'm happy 
because we're kind of back to what we were before COVID. We're at about 200 youth in the county that are involved in 4-H. Do we want more? Of course we want more. But I, I, what I like to remember is that I'm only part-time in this county, and so I'm only able to do what I'm able to do. And the fact that we got back to the numbers pre-COVID, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, there's always a goal to do more. So other than that, that's all I have for my report. Great report. If you have any questions, I know I, I talk fast and I have a little bit of enthusiasm, but I like what I do, so. Um, Mary did text me a little update for the museum update. Uh, let me just get it open again. She just said that new photos have been added to the website. Uh, she's still producing history files at, at our station, uh, which she won the Best of the Midwest award. Um, the schoolhouse on the fairgrounds will be open for the fair and apple affair. And we have um, been replacing rotten trim and rain gutters at this time. So that's what she had to say. I got a question. Um, is this, have we ever gotten, I mean, I'm new here, of course, everybody knows that, but have we ever gotten awards like this before? Um, yes, uh, okay. five years ago we had won an excellence award, but it's been oh, wow. since 2018 that we'd won an excellence award. So we had won some achievement awards last year, but um, it's been a while since the, about a half a decade since the excellence award, so it was great to bring a couple of those home. That's awesome. That's great. What are these awards through? Or who are they through? Um, so it's our state organization, Wisconsin Community Media. They host a Best of the Midwest Media Fest. And so we have stations from all over the Midwest coming. Typically, most of them are from Wisconsin, but we do have a few from uh, surrounding states. So it was great that we could compete and you know yeah. show up just like the other, even the bigger uh, communities and the bigger stations. So it was uh, really Worth great. We're the only county. Yeah, yes. Only county. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Jacob, how about you? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And so, um, just a slight comment on uh, Andrea's. You know, we're we're up to two hundred people in 4-H, but you know, we got to remember that Trempolo County is still um, like the fifty-fifth least populous county in the, in the state, and there's only thirty thousand you know people with me. So, two hundred kids for thirty thousand and being one of the least populated is a, a good achievement. Um, and so, um, moving on to um, my report, um, we've done quite a few things in um, April and May, um, both at the state level, Jackson County, Trempolo County, and we'll talk about a few. So for the state, I pretty much do um, the same thing no matter what. Um, I concluded my onboard training, so that was a year and a half long process, but I'm finally done with that, and we're a full-fledged um, horticulture educator. Um, and then I participate in the Ask the Garden Question Forum, where I take um, outreach questions and then I answer them on the state level as well as for the county. Um, for Jackson County, I do a series of random lessons with the health and well-being educator. Um, that's called Nature's Food for Thought. And this is presented to um, Black River Middle School um, Family and Consumer Education class. And this is um, pretty much nine months out of the year I do this. Um, I also presented a small cultural and historical relevance maple syrup program to the Home and Educator Advisory Committee. Um, and so that was my Jackson um, presentations. And so the, the Nature Scooper thought is like 15 presentations over um, nine weeks. And then we split it up obviously to two semesters. Um, and, and then moving on to Trempolo County. So I did um, two different presentations of a series called Seedling Launchpad. Um, and Seedling Launchpad, we teach kids about the fundamentals of seed germination and plant diversity, and then we make seed bombs and they get to throw their seeds everywhere. And so that's also what I did at the Juntos um, Family Day as well. Um, and then I, I participated in the eighth grade environmental day program at the refuge, and so that was held at the Trempolo um, National Refuge. Um, and then I wasn't able to program there, but I was able to help out and facilitate and uh, make some uh, connections. And hopefully next year we'll be able to do some horticultural programming um, in, in, in cooperation with them. 
So um, what's not on the, uh, the list is um, we, the horticulture um, egg agent and um, uh, Tammy, the sports staff, we work with the um, community garden in Arcadia. So in April and May, we, um, we did a lot of activity, getting it plotted out, getting it fertilized, and then getting it ready for people to use. So that was quite a bit of time and effort down in Arcadia. And so that's going well. We've had some conversations with the school about where we kind of see this going. And so that's really based on how this year goes um hopefully we're not having too many issues down at the um, community garden and then um this had upcoming uh, events uh, so um I, it's already happened now where i, I taught summer school at mel men we were teaching um farm to fork uh topics i i had the hutos family day it has family night but we're doing family day and then i had my uh, conference down in madison um, to finish up my plan of work so my plan of work is due in july and so we're just doing that in my August. So that's what I was up to for April and May. Does anybody have any questions? I do. Where is the community garden in Arcadia and how does that exactly work? So the community so the garden, garden, garden is right outside of the high school. I'm not sure of the street um, because they were, um, I'm not from Arcadia or, or don't go to Arcadia a lot, but it's right, right next to the high school and it's, um, there is the Wanick Center across the street, and it's on that far path right there. And then it worked. Um, it's a collaboration, I guess, between the school district because it's their land and then us. And we uh, facilitate the community garden, which means we repair the land. Um, and then we take, you know, people registration and, you know, basically assign them a plot. And then it allows, um, you know, just a little bit more diversity and people who can grow who don't have plots. So um, is there a specific question I didn't answer in there? No, I guess I, I was just trying to understand how the community part of it worked. And you answered it by saying that each person asks to be a part of the community garden and then they get assigned a, a plot. And the size, I assume, can vary depending on what their needs are. Um, so the plots aren't uniform in size, but we try to make them around 400 square feet um, and right around. And then um, we usually try to fill up with all the people who want a singular plot first. And then once those singular plots, they have the option to kind of get a secondary plot if there's some open. And so this year, uh, there's people with multiple plots, but um, you know we filled out all the slots, and then we made a preference to make sure people got you know had the chance to get one first before we handed out extra plots. Do you know how many people um, have plots? Then I mean, if they have multiples, don't count them. But just how many people are participating? Um, I don't offhand. Tammy might just off, off the cuff know the number, um, but okay. I really love the idea. That's why I have all the questions. <laughs> That's awesome. Sorry. We also charge a rental fee, if I remember correctly. Is it $20 yeah. a plot? 25 25 a plot. Um, which is, uh, pretty, so, which is, I was sorry, which is pretty uh, good for this area. Jackson County charges $35, um, and La Crosse is up, the, up there as well. So that's a pretty good price for the services, especially when you consider the cost of fertilizer, um, water. Um, so it's really a, a good deal for the community. Uh, yeah, because I, I actually from Arcadia, so I know where that garden is, and I go by it quite often. It's a good setup being from that area. So what, what is the side streets? So it's like Fairfield and something. Uh, Reed Street, Reed, Reed Avenue. It's R-E-I-T. Right, right. Right, okay, right. To your knowledge, this is the, Arcadia is the only location with a community garden? Uh, so Jackson used to have a community garden um, in Black River, but that has moved to a um, a private entity. It, you know, it's its own thing. Um, so for us, it's the only UW-run community garden. Um, there is a like another private community garden in Arcadia that is run by the um, the middle school and some volunteers. There. Okay, thank you. All right, Pat any other information that we need to know well uh, Melissa shared her report she is down in Madison at the downtown association meeting and she has been uh, 
keeping up her busy schedule, um, working in clerk and elections inspector training, um, and has submitted some articles on that. She has been working on uh, in community development as well, looking at an analysis of pharmacy closures. We're actually lucky in this county that we still have some rural pharmacies. Um, it's just getting more challenging to keep that. So uh, Pat, that's, that's very true. What I'm interested in, or I guess what I'd like to understand about that is that what is, what is Melissa's work surrounding the pharmacies? like? Right now they're doing an analysis of the closure, the factors that are, are causing them to close and um, what that impact is. So action from that data has not yet been, we need the data. No. Okay, no. thank you. But it's the kind of information, and this is sort of the benefit of the research connection with the university is that it's data that can be used by people who are interested in starting a new business or uh, community development organizations maybe the uh, Arcadia Chamber is like oh look at this our local pharmacy left and we know that there's this pent-up demand and maybe we can work to recruit a pharmacy so okay thank you you bet. Um, and uh, natural resources, she is doing her ongoing water testing program and uh, got an innovation grant, so she's working on getting that organized. So, uh, and getting ready for the International Silage Conference. She's talking about plastics recycling there. So, and nobody asked me where she's going on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She's going to China. Oh. Yes. Ooh. All right. So we have lots of people paying for that. Yeah. Not so much you guys. So, <laughs> um, but that's actually it's it's you know we expect our faculty members to do these kinds of things, and uh, she's unusual because, as a county faculty member, she actually uh, does some really impressive work. Um, and that's based on that work she's done with farmers across actually all of Wisconsin on recycling the egg plastics, finding vendors, and working with them. So, um, do I have a report for either one? For okay. Steve naughty, naughty. We'll <laughs> have to have a chat. They have all been very busy um, getting their with Steve getting his test plots put together. Um, and with uh, Adam, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a, in a few minutes. Uh, he's taken on some new responsibilities statewide. So uh, he's been busy with that. Uh, we have the FoodWise updates from Monica and April. And Monica is really finishing up all her um, onboarding and really taking on some real uh, impressive programs. Um, and the kids really like Miss Monica a lot, so. Uh, and then uh, April is um, also uh, expanding her program <coughs> because it's now a four county program. Pepin, Buffalo, Trumplow, and Jackson. So she coordinates for all four counties. And so she's been doing a lot of meeting with uh, partners in her new counties to get that set up. So um, working with Head Start in Buffalo County and, uh, and those things. The other thing that's important is because of the increase in the programming and sort of the changes, uh, we are getting an additional uh, FoodWise educator that we w that we have started recruiting for. That will be a 75% position. Technically, they'll be housed in Jackson County, but they will serve the whole area. So, busy time of year. Well, uh, actually, it's not as busy for FoodWise. Oh, really? Um, because oh, so of much schools. of their work is done with the schools. Yeah. But it's a time when they spend 
a lot of time with their partners getting their programs set up for the coming year and in this case uh, getting a new person hired and onboarded so uh, yeah there's that and uh, trying to think no the the rest of it will come in that backfill position you got it. so sounds good any questions Looks like we're going to move on to number six, business items with discussion and possible action. Digital media department, media coverage discussion, including executive finance and property committee chair. Why don't you come up so you have it? My yeah, <laughs> throwing it over my shoulder. Whoop. Maybe I should just say I did ask to have this added to the committee um, discussion today, mainly because I knew that there had been discussions um, outside of this committee about digital media and their work hours and the coverage of different programming. And I had just wanted to be sure that we were in the loop on what was happening with that. So I'm hoping you can share. Well, I can only speak personally I I'd like to see all of our meetings televised um, it's just a matter of being able to afford it and I'm not gonna start giving my opinion on which committees are more important than others and there why right. should be televised so um, I guess in in a perfect world we'd have enough employees to take care of all of county business um, do we not had there not been discussions though at the exec committee or somewhere within the county about hours and getting meetings um, bringing meetings on site and I, I guess I'm looking for like what's been discussed at committee levels and have there been decisions made discussion yes decisions no uh, yeah we, we just kind of decided to table it until after <coughs> we move into the this room into the new building and kind of get settled first it seemed like that's kind of the direction we wanted to go and just kind of wait and kind of keep things the way they are currently um, until we make this big move so that's kind of the last discussion we'd had with them so yeah, i think there's going to be circumstances that we have no idea until we're moved in and have some time to see how things play out and for a uh, little information on like human services and health are the two major issues and part of that is their hours which would mean the TV well, studio would have to adjust mm -hmm. and it's because of well uh, health would be an example where we have doctors and whatever that are on that committee there we can't switch their time so it'd have to be done on ours I don't know has anything ever happened with um highway uh they're still meeting out at their own to yeah be we've discussed <clears throat> an exact finance of having them come in here but i guess it just hasn't happened i don't yeah, I, don't I, don't I would uh, yeah. in my own opinion i wouldn't hold my breath <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well they've kind of even said yeah we can do that but that's as far as it's yeah. gone yeah I think we're covering everything else, right? Other than those three? Yep. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, like I'm saying, I think like being also being on the health department committee, like I said, if we did have to have coverage it again, how do we afford it? Because it's a night meeting and there's doctors on there that they work during the day. So how would we afford to be able to cover that in the evening? It's, it's, it's a financial is what it is. Not the willingness, I don't think. I think it's more of the, the money. So is this like the only room? that has TV yes yep okay so in the other building is it gonna be bigger than this yes you know? yep. okay and we'll have I'll have to look at that but slightly bigger room slightly 
But then we'll still have capabilities in this room as well as the new room? Nope, just the new room. Because well, all, all the microphones and the cameras you see on the ceiling will be moving over as well. Hmm. They didn't purchase new of anything, really, other than our TriCaster. Mm -hmm. So all this equipment will be moving with it. Okay. Is that an option to look at that maybe we shouldn't do that? I think, again, that's pretty expensive is my guess yeah oh, it? it's kind of late in the process oh, it is. Okay. sort of all right all right perhaps perhaps down the road especially as we talk more about whether or not you know what all needs to be covered and how that works maybe that does have to be a consideration down the road it's just ex again it's the money but i think down the road is open. i have a feeling why we didn't purchase new things before is because with everything being so tight i think the board at the time the committee at the time didn't want to add more expense i'm guessing When the conversations are being had at other committee meetings, is it important, and I am I am truly just asking because I don't know, but because this is the oversight committee for digital media, is it important for somebody on the committee to be a part of that discussion, or is it really just Kevin that needs to be there for those discussions, and then Kevin brings that back to us for further discussion? Or like, what should that look like? Maybe a combination. Well, I don't know if we definitely need it, um, you know, need that extra person. I don't know how Kevin feels about it, but if we have one representing um, and doing the job, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, and, and Doc Seisha's on the committee as well, so. So as a representative for our committee, I guess Doc could do it too, I suppose. So I guess we're gonna we can look at um, when we do move into the other room. Mm -hmm. um, that we we want to look forward on having another meeting when it comes to who's gonna how we can cover every department. Yeah, and whether that's maybe flexing hours or what exactly we do. But yeah, that, it seems like that's kind of the direction we want to kind of wait till we make this big move and take all this equipment out of this room and and see kind of how the meeting rooms are used and everything. So it'll be very interesting to see in the coming months. Um, I, don't, I don't even personally know when we're gonna make this move for you know this room, if we're gonna use this up until December or just October or whatever, I'm not sure yet. So we'll find out more as we get closer to the end of the construction date and the ribbon cutting. So I'm um, excited for that, but uh, yeah, it's, there's a lot of unknowns right now. So can I ask how many meetings are being held here and like in the Wisconsin room at the same time? Because we're missing the Wisconsin room, right? It, it does happen occasionally, um, uh, not not extremely often. Okay. They try to seem to stagger them a little bit. Um, I don't know if you ever checked our web the the, the county website, but you can kind of there's a calendar right on the home page. You can kind of click on each date and kind of see what meetings are when okay, and then uh, it'll show you what room they're in the agenda and everything like that so that's actually a really great way of yeah. keeping up on when the agenda or when the meetings are and where they are I think you can also check outside of Paul's office as well uh, to see the posted meetings but yeah I encourage everyone to do that just to even if you don't read the agenda just to look at see where they're at uh, that's a really great source of information rooms and we generally try to keep the committees down here gotcha unless you have two at the same time like we did last week okay perfect thank you any thank other, you yeah all right any other questions or concerns on that all right we'll move to b digital media department discussion acts and possible uh for credit card for a 500 to a thousand dollar limit so uh, the reason why we're uh, requesting this, um, we would like to have the ability to pay um, for everything or for certain things electronically as more companies move away from invoicing and purchase orders. Um, we would like to have our own cards so we can put things in our name um, instead of having to put them in other departments' names. Um, we have our Adobe Suite currently in, in Tim Robertson, the IT director's name. and it's always interesting because we almost have to like pay their department or kind of it's really such a strange setup um, how we have to actually pay 
them to pay you know the bill <laughs> so it's uh kind of concerning and I, I would really uh, just prefer to be able to put it in our name um, for uh, another item we would like um, is Envato. It, uh, it's a website that provides royalty free audio, music, videos, and projects and templates for us to kind of help improve our videos. Um, but they only accept credit cards, so that's something really tough. And we've tried to go through uh, Tim's card, and it just keeps getting declined and saying it's fraud. Um, so he recommended that we ask for a, a credit card for our department, and so that's kind of why I'm here today. Stacy, are you here for that yeah. discussion? I am. What are your thoughts about that? Um, credit cards are, have to go through our office, through Paul. We're the one, we're the one master credit card, and um, every department starts out with a $500 limit um, until things go through, because we only have so much credit through the whole eight cards under a uh, sheriff's department has like 40, and then the highway, we're all separate. Um, Paul just wanted me to let you guys know it the application has to go through Paul under his main credit card and that he starts out with 500 and then once we know things are going good I'm getting invoices like I should account numbers like I should to pay the bill on time then we can up it but when we up it we're gonna have to drop somebody else does that make sense you get two you get two you get two okay you want another two you can only have one and you can have one because we only have so much across. We just upped it to, I don't know what it is, 40, 20, can't remember. Is that a problem to have to drop it somewhere else? No, not usually, to not usually, that? and usually we drop Paul's unless something big's happening because he has the huge chunk on his 10,000 or whatever on his card. Or if there's a huge purchase, like Jeremy had to make a huge Menards purchase, then that comes through Paul's card. Do we need a motion to move forward with that? I don't see a concern with that. I don't see a concern at all with it. Anybody else has any issues? Okay with you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm fine on. with us. Yeah. Kevin, you'll just have to get with Paul. He is out until Friday at conference, but um, he'll need information from you to get your card set up through RCU. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So now, I'm at, do we make a motion? Yep. I mean, when you make a motion, I'd like to make a motion to. Obtain a credit card um, following the county's usual process of $500 limit and increasing as appropriate. Thank you. I'll Thanks, guys. All right, so we got mm -hmm. Don with the motion and we have Kevin with the second. Do I need to take a, um, can I just take a vote, vote or do I'll I need ask to? if there are any questions? Yeah, I guess is there any questions on that we haven't answered in the discussion? All right, hearing none, um, everybody in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion has been passed. All right. All right. Um, what I wanted to talk about next is not necessarily uh, require action on the part of the committee, but I needed to up update you. Adam um, <coughs> has been doing a lot of work in the Juntos program and has, has had uh, a nominal leadership role in that. So the Positive Youth Development Institute director actually approached him and said, we'd like to do a bio. We'd like to buy 40% of your time for a two-year period to be the state leader in the Juntos program and we would, uh, that would free up 40% of your salary for the county to backfill your position. Um, and I think it's a pretty sweet deal because actually <laughs> he's been doing a lot of this work and we expect that our educators will do work for the, for the state. I mean, that's part of the expectation um, of working for extension. But for them to say, we're taking a lot of his time, we have to be fair to the county. Sweet. So what, um, um, Adam and I have been talking a great deal about what makes the most sense. And a lot of times uh, in other counties and other places, they try and find somebody who will just take on, you know, sort of a whole series of responsibilities. 
Um, that turns out not to be, I don't believe it to be as effective or as rewarding for the individual taking on the backfill. Because um, you're sort of like, you don't really have ownership, you may not really know on any given day what you should be doing. And what I personally have done in the past when I've had buyouts is I um, create a special project for the person to work on that follows along my the programming that I would do. So when Adam and I have been talking, one of the things that he would really like to expand, he's been having some conversations about it, is uh, the notion of restorative justice in the school districts. Uh, strengthening up the teen court program and working with the local school districts to bring that notion to them so that they can be more effective with the different kinds of uh, issues that show up in school districts. Um, for example, we recently had a young man who was brought in and uh, he's volunteering for one of our programs because he was a naughty boy. He, he, he got charged with truancy and schools, are, schools and the county are trying to be more proactive in that because truancy is not good for children. <laughs> So other than getting a lecture from his mother and from me, um, but we want really to take this position and really, really focus it on that notion of restorative justice. So um, we haven't put a person in yet, um, but that is our goal. And we're working with some other agencies to see if we can come up with a creative way to do this. But it will be for a two year period of time and if you guys are comfortable with that idea that we have of moving forward on a special project, having it focused on the idea of restorative justice, we will keep moving forward. Don, you look like you have questions. I always do. <laughs> I know. We do, love it. Do you, so am I to understand then that Adam is going to be dedicating 40% of his time at the state level? Um, that is 40% of his work that's not going to be done here. And I hear you saying that you want to backfill that with a pro with this specific project. So then what happens to the other work that he was doing? Um, he will still be doing uh, much of that. Like um, he will continue his work with, um, uh, I'm sorry, my brain just shut down, Sci science camp and um, the mental health group, uh, his collaborations will keep going. He'll be bringing that person in and along with him on some of the work he's doing with uh, uh, the Ch CJCC as they become involved in um, restorative justice. So I guess, I, I guess what I'm hearing then is that he probably would have put 40% of his time onto this restorative justice anyway because that's his passion. So now we're backfilling it um, that way. I just, I, I don't yeah, have a that, problem with I, it. I think that's the best way to think about it. This was an area he, he wants to move into. He just hasn't yet, just time has been an issue. And this gives a, a sort of a, a shot to get that program started. Using, using the relationships, using the, the connections that he's already established. Could you explain restorative justice just a little bit more? I think I heard you say a teen court or something. Um, okay, the whole idea of restorative justice, actually think about where restorative comes from, restore. And it is based on the premise that um, instead of just punishment, you want to restore the person that has been harmed. You want to find a way to make them whole or as whole as, as is theoretically possible um, and hold the individual who caused the harm accountable. So um, one way to think about it is if you had um, uh, someone, adult, youth, who decided that they were going to break windows down on Main Street. We could toss them in the hoose cow or they could actually uh, help to repair the windows. That might be, that might be one thing. Um, in the context of teen court, 
that is a model where instead of bringing the youth to the criminal justice system, they manage it at, at the teen court level and they train up a series of youth who serve as judges and they, um, they hear the case, whatever the case is, and these tend to be low-level cases. When I, if you were to talk to Annie Lasowski, who does a very thorough program in Pepin and Buffalo, typically vaping, uh, some truancy, THC, marijuana, yeah. Um, and it's that panel who've been trained, who are trained in an ongoing fashion, who are the ones that decide what is appropriate justice um, and it, it's a court of peers a court of peers so the reason I'm asking so many questions is because actually my son brought this to me and said he had proposed it at Blair Taylor to do this kind of thing he didn't call it restorative justice he, he called it called it peer teen court, court teen or court, whatever yeah. something something I've like that heard of it and um, I didn't really realize it was a thing so it, it's, well, it's in a lot of other counties in the area. When I was up in, o in Oneida County, they had a, a decent teen court program while I was up there. It, it's really good for youth to be managed by other youth, their peers, mm -hmm. so that they're able to then, you know, change their actions, but they're also being held accountable by their peers. Their peers are going to make sure either they write that 500-word essay about why THC is bad, or they go and do the volunteer work to... Um, undo what they've done it's it's not just a slap on the wrist the judicial system has gotten you now you've got to go figure yeah. out how to live with it it's your your peers it, are telling it, you what they're it, going it to is do. a lot about that notion of making things right making mm -hmm. the situation whole um, you know because if you just put somebody and and jails are appropriate jails are often the place for some people but um, you know, sometimes it's like that doesn't really make the person who is injured whole. So that's the that's a principle of this, and they they do use it a lot with teen. I mean, that's the basic premise behind teen court, but they are also um, looking at it more and more in terms of the regular justice system. And I believe this is one of the many concepts they've talked about with the criminal justice coordinating council. Very cool. Thank you. So uh, maybe your son's desire will happen. Um, Mr. Chair, um, I am f somewhat familiar with adult restorative justice programs, not so much youth, where, th um, for example, sober recovery is kind of a Christian-based kind of restorative justice program, and I'm very familiar with that. And again, people that have been hurt or done things in the past, it's kind of the same thing you're judged by your peers. Not it's. It's like I said, when you go through that, it's not good, but it's it's a little bit better to be judged by your peers than somebody else. At the same time, you're not again, you're not getting a slap on the wrist, but you're being held about about, uh, about your peers and trying to make the victim as whole as possible. So I think I'm familiar on the adult side of of um, restorative justice programs that I've been involved with. So I think that'll be the same with youth. So I'm familiar with that background. Well, and I like the idea of let's start a little younger before they get a little older. And you end up in the adult. Yeah. Well, what's yeah. nice, too, is it'll help out even if you look at even the principals and all that stuff in the schools, instead of them saying this is what we're going to do or you're slap, you're going to you're gonna slap your hand this time, but it never happened again. Well, let's get them there first. Yep. Let them have that consequence the first time so there won't be another time so we don't have to slap a hand and move on i totally love the idea i think adam's up the right side yeah i do yeah yep it refresh me pat no has adam he's just trumple county right or he yes he is just trumple <laughs> he he's not being shared he yeah he was well yeah he, he, he isn't he he, yeah, he does he I will be doing at the state level, right, but yeah. sixty percent will be now Trempolo. Right. Yeah. And forty. Yeah. State. Perfect. So um, we'd still have him as sixty percent. Yeah. Yes. Trempolo County only. Yeah. Yeah, and he'll still. I mean, we have a very uh, active Juntos <clears throat> program here, so some of that Juntos work is actually being 
done here. Um, and it, you know, from the perspective of an educator who's been here a while, who does some really good and creative work, the opportunity to try something else on for a while, it makes you feel valued. Yeah, honored. Yeah. Honored, valued, <laughs> and that's a good thing. And it also gives you a chance to decide if, if, if that's what you want or if you're going to come back. And like I said, I've had this uh, a couple of times, and they were great opportunities, and I was really glad to come back. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I think, you know, when, when they proposed this for Adam, I, I, I couldn't have been happier. And it does give us this, this opportunity. Yeah. Um, Adam and I will keep you uh, in, you know, informed as we move forward with this. So, it's awesome. Together. Yeah. I mean, think about it. We have this, uh, you know, the, the exploding uh, Latinx population, and, you know, you really want to get um, all the residents of the county involved and connected. And 4 H is, I mean, huge. 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 So. <laughs> We, we like that. Um, moving to D? Moving to D. All right, sharing 4 H program assistance with Jackson County. Story. Okay, let me tell you a story. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have had interesting support in Jackson County. We had one individual who was full time, well, they've all, all been full time. Um, but didn't do a really good job of supporting the educators there. And then we hired some, a new person after the other one retired. And she was doing a great job, but she was, um, it wasn't a really rewarding position because uh, Andrea was still on leave and the educators had been so trained not to ask for any kind of help. <laughs> Jackson County that they didn't ask for help and I'll be honest Tammy's sitting back there looking down but she ended up doing some of the work there for the Jackson County we kind of divided up the work just so it would get done but when Chris uh, decided to leave she has a great analytical mind and she'd spent some time thinking about it and she was like it doesn't make a lot of sense for the Jackson County position to be full time um, and it was also problematic because in that county they very much um, have really sort of strict requirements about how uh, county staff can react so it seemed to me a good time to meet with the uh, people in Jackson County who make decisions about that stuff so we could do some problem solving. So I met with Paul's counterpart, Cindy Altman, the HR director, Susie Minerts, and um, Max Hart, who's your counterpart over there. And we talked about that open support staff position. And um, one of the things that's challenging is it's actually under their HR director's control but she can't tell the person what to do because she didn't know what needed to be done <laughs> so we thought of a lot of different possibilities and what we came up with is um, a bit of a hybrid that I have with Annie Lasowski in Buffalo County in Buffalo County they have a regular support staff but they also have a 4-H program assistant now keep in mind Annie has a freakishly large 4-H program <laughs> so it made a lot of sense um, so what we are proposing is an administrative assistant to position that's actually a title from the university's catalog and we would put it over two counties um, when we do that it's a university position it gets university benefits and we have to meet their pay minimums We'd run it through the 136 contracts like you do right now. So like Andrea shows up on both the Trempolo County 136 contract and the Jackson County 136, okay? What we would do is have that position 
be f focus to a large extent as a 4-H program assistant for the two counties. Now, one of the rationales for that is that both the 4-H programs in both counties have taken a hit in terms of support. They just have. Um, you know, they both used to have one FTE each. The programs didn't really get any smaller and, and the demand on the educators has increased with all the risk management. Um, you know, how do we keep the kids safe? We got to get the volunteers trained. We got to get a background check. We got to so on and so forth. And there are new and increasing requirements from the IRS. It's a system called chartering. And those are things that take up a significant amount of time and aren't as directed on education. So we, we don't have as much uh, educator support and, and they have more demands on them. So that's why we talk about making it a 4-H program assistant. But there'd also be additional office support responsibilities because Jackson County does need a support staff. So that person would also be working with Steve and April and Carla and doing, and doing their work. If we move this way, we would maintain Tammy. We can't do without Tammy. Um, and there would be support for all the educators. They would still be getting the support they need. Tammy would actually have more time to support the county educators here <coughs> because her 4-H responsibilities would be transferred to this new position. So, um, you know, when she's sitting there meeting demands for, you know, lists of leaders and yada yada, we send it off to this other person. Um, these do not have co-funding, so it'd be 100% county funded. Um, there is an increasing move in some counties to move in this direction, to actually have the support staff be hired through the university. It just makes that management question easier because technically, Tammy's a really great uh, support staff. Technically, I have no authority over her from a legal perspective. Um, that doesn't mean you can get out of hand there, Tammy. <laughs> um, and for most of us, it doesn't present a problem, but there are times when it is a challenge. If you... Technically, here, I don't know. That's not good. Huh. Yeah, technically, probably like it is in other places, HR. So, but, you know, there's consequences to these things. Um, the other thing, uh, I think it really gives us an opportunity to strengthen that 4-H program. Andrea gets to focus on those educational things, the leadership training, the, the programming, um, brings renewed energy to it. And this position, I mean, I've watched it evolve over in Buffalo County. And Bianca is taking on, you know, support of the, the, the camps. And uh, she, this fall, she'll be doing a lot of work with the chartering, which Andrea can tell you takes more time than it should just because she has all these other parts of her job to do. I started chartering in August, and I didn't have them done in January when I went on maternity leave. They yeah. take a lot of time. But I think we can do that, especially if we put either uh, Spanish language or whole <coughs> chunk cultural <coughs> experience into the position description. And because these don't require a college degree, I think we would have a greater opportunity to pull some of that. Um, I do want you to, and it supports the changes that are happening in 4-H and the PYD Institute. I mean, that's why I've actually shared this information with the people in charge of that at the uh, state level. And no, it doesn't mean that Andrea is my favorite. <laughs> She'd have to feed me more chocolate for her to be my favorite. 
Um, I'm just really trying to find a workable solution to a couple of ongoing challenges. <laughs> One is really, you know, making sure we have the support staff we need in both counties that um, and that we're really doing a better job of supporting the 4-H program. Um, it's, it's just, you know, I really want everybody to be successful. But when we talked about this, and it, you know, it was Max and Cindy and Susie who were both like, oh, I kind of like that idea. <laughs> and I said I'd bring it to you. Um, I think it is more workable if we make it a full-time position that we split across counties. Um, on that last page, it, it has sort of a at least a draft uh, position description this is based a lot on what we have over in buffalo county i probably would need to be thinking about some more of the language about how it would support sort of support staff stuff um but it, it really i think i think this is a really <coughs> strong idea is it free? Oh, no. <laughs> right, so let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm tr we have to meet the university minimums for pay. And the minimum right now is $17.20. Um, I would propose, I like nice round m numbers. I'd, I'd say let's go with 20, but I can check and see what I have over with Bianca as well. Um, and then because there would be uh, benefits as well. I have yet to get a response back from our HR about sort of the general cost. I'm thinking it would be about 30%. So if we use those numbers, it, the <coughs> individual county share, you know, I, my brain just shut down. Um, so I have a calculator there. No, no, I can. Here, I can get that too. So, uh, 20 <laughs> times 2,080. So, you usually do 40% for benefits as an average. Um, mm -hmm. Although, obviously, what people take for benefits varies. And of course, now I'm not logged in. So, I guess if anyone else has their computers up or a calculator on or their phone. phone, I got a phone. So, 20 times 2080. 41,600. 41, Divided in half. <laughs> 20,800. 20,800. And then you multiply that by 1.3 or 1.4. I'm trying to get a number. 29,120. 29,120. So we'd pull it, probably I'd be able to pull it in under $30,000. Hmm. And if I understand the county's procedure, we would need to make this as a proposal through that uh, budget process if I understand that correctly um, but I I really wanted to throw this out there and see what you guys were thinking if you thought this was a good strategy if you'd be willing to share on a position like this I uh, haven't had a chance to have a, a full-fledged staff meeting because really I just talked about it with the Jackson County folks on Thursday I was sick on Friday, so I worked on it yesterday. My um, comment would be that it looks to me like we would be fine with our budget because we picked up 40% of Adam's money went to the state. Am I correct? I mean, overall budget. But we're going to be back. Cover but we're going to be back. We'll it. backfill that, so we're still going to be spending that. Okay. So it would be an extra. Thirty thousand essentially 30, is what it looks like here. If we if we could if we could hire somebody at twenty and we considered forty percent benefits and then we split it between the two counties, we'd be at twenty nine one twenty. Mm -hmm. But do we have the money in this budget for that? We run a really tight tight budget. I would have to go. That's why I'm talking about the 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 budgeting process. You can go through a. A request for um, new projects. That's why we'd have to go through that. 
Oh, yeah. absolutely. It has to yeah. go through yeah. the whole yeah. process. Yeah. But if you guys are not buying me going and asking for more money, then. Because so, this would then, so if we were to pursue it right now, it would have to come out of the general fund because we didn't budget for it for this year. That is correct. And I guess my operating assumption, because um, I discovered you can do something very interesting, <laughs> is we can put a, a range of appointment in the job description. So I can literally put in that job description when I go out and hire it, this appointment will be 50 to 100 percent initially 50 percent if we hired it right now and then went at the beginning of the year to include it in our budget here um, but yeah we if we hired it right away we'd have to pull it out of the general fund um, I'm not a big fan of that unless it's a fluffing emergency um, but I do think that in the long run, this is an investment that will benefit the county, not just the 4-H program, although I think it could really help the 4-H program strengthen it. Um, but I also think it gets the other educators more support staff time that, that they deserve. I mean, if you ask, if you ask Melissa how much support staff time she gets, it's not much. And it's not Tammy's fault. It's not at all. It's just that the 4-H program has a lot of demands, support staff demands. I'm not opposed, and I think the argument for the position is strong. I don't, I'm not going to, um, I don't want to, to come across as if it's not. But I do not think we're going to get approved through um, the county board to use general fund monies okay. for this. So we'd have to go through the regular process. I believe so. Yep. That's um, what I thought. But I am wondering if there are any grant opportunities to help fund the program, the position, if that's been investigated. Uh, no, we haven't. That might sound not always easy to find grants that pay people though a You're lot of right. times that's a stipulation that you can't use it as a salary yeah. so you're not wrong on that but I just thought maybe UW extension with the I don't know what they're if they're any different in some way shape or form because they are supporting the counties and have a shared you know if there would be something in that realm I think it's worth investigating anyway it, it is it is mm -hmm. certainly worth investigating and from the perspective of Jackson County if, if this committee is going, we support this idea in concept and we want you to incorporate it into the 2024 budget through the appropriate budget process, I think that's, um, that gets them started. So Jackson County, they're just right now also debating in what they wanna do or they are really for it and wanna jump on board and go? Um, well, they're debating, but okay. they need to they need to refill the position. <laughs> oh, they need it. to get a support staff in there. How long have they been recruiting? We haven't recruited yet. Okay, I thought that they were unable to fill an existing position. This just meets a need, a new need. Uh, well, a continuing need. The position is empty right now because because the person quit. She took another there job. There wasn't quite enough for her to do in Jackson County, but there would be plenty to do if we split it. Is that what I'm really hearing? So yep. Jackson County ain't going to be, they basically already have this money, is what I'm sounds. We just need it if we we're going to split it with Jackson. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So I wanted to bring the idea and concept and see where you guys, I mean, because even if I go through the, the regular process, I need the support of the committee to say, yes, this is an investment we should make in our youth. So we support it when it comes budgety time. Can I ask something too also, if we were to move forward on this, I mean, would there be an ejection to say, okay, minimum 1720 to get this started for this year, we start at 1720. So we're not spending so much money. And then maybe next year, look at the idea of saying $20 an hour. Even I'm just throwing 17, it out. Even at 17, I don't think this year the big board 
board from that kind of thing. Now, I, right, but I mean, I'm just saying. Laugh us out the door. Right, but just something <laughs> to look at to where we, you know, if we're going to yeah. do something to make this work, right. let's not shoot for more money. Let's shoot for the minimum to, if we're going to do it, to move it forward, I guess. You're right. It is worth asking the question, but I, I hate to say, at least this year, whether it's 17 or 20, the big board probably is, I hate to tell you, they're not going to be a fan. Mm -hmm. No, the, I, I, no, they're n I do Just not want to budget. go yeah. <laughs> to, I don't want to pull stuff from the general so executive fund. finance, I can see them, like, don't even. No, I want to go through the, and that also gives me time to speak with the Jackson County and, and we can negotiate right. sort of what, you know what makes sense i mean i was actually asking tammy what what her hourly rate was because you know i don't want to sit there and get a 4-h assistant right. assistant paid more well, than yeah. our office manager Absolutely. So I like, no. agree with you. um but the market is different than it once was uh let me see culver's culver's i'm not sure which one but it was 18 1850 yeah, an hour you're right wow. yeah. 100 now, correct. now <laughs> this also has a full array of university benefits that um, when I've spoken with uh, the handful of other support staff that go through this that are actually university employees because we have about six of them now they they really like it they feel more included they feel they have more access to professional development. They have more access to some of the software. Because. Um, Would there be value in pushing UW to create some sort of position, or would they do that, that they would support for more than just our county? Like, are there more counties in the state that have this need that we could petition their support? They all do right they all have this need and they've talked about it and they've talked about it and they've talked about it yep. and i have yet to see action we're ahead of them on that one i guess what you're saying right yes please absolutely okay i would just like to say that in regards to um dawn's question about grants and andrea is totally right when we get grants there are stipulations what you can buy and we have to keep copies of the guidelines for audit purposes. Supplies, very limited on what we can do for food, like Juntos would pay for meals. So as far as finding it for wages or paying people, I, I think that's probably way out there. And, um, but because we have to keep just a journal of everything we spend, just in case they ask. I, I, I know your challenge. I, I work with grants and health care, too, and I know they often don't support um, staffing, but weird things have happened since COVID with that, where exceptions were actually made. Now, with COVID and the public health emergency having ended, maybe that's not the case, uh, but some things were extended beyond it. I just think it's worth exploring it's opportunities. It's just worth looking at. I, I know. I don't want to waste people's time, but I don't. I don't think that we will get approved for this money through the general fund right now, given some of the other competing things that I know are coming. Um, so how can we make this the least impact possible so that we can get you what you want, right? That's what I'm looking for. We would probably have to do a project initiation. That's that's what I've talked about. At, Is that what at budget do? time. So in July, we start working on that. August, it goes to Paul, and then exec finance is September. And then they take them and they pick maybe, and choose. Maybe I should make a comment now. Yeah. I would think I might support it here. And how's that going to look when I don't support it at X Finance? Right. Because you know, finance, you get a lot that's going to look kind of funny. But um, my comment there is if we get shared revenue from the state, things change. If we don't, as of right now, I'm thinking we're, we're looking at $10 items, not. Yeah. Uh, so sorry, but that's the fact. Well, and I, you know, I understand, I understand the difference between your role as a member of this committee, and your role on the exec finance. Um, some people might have a hard time understanding that you actually can hold two different ideas in your brain and it not explode. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think, we need to pursue this. And um, 
and see what happens. If we don't ask, we don't know. Um, and we have to, you know, I, I need to build as strong an argument as I can. I need to check out possibilities. And, and is, there, is there any way either you and or maybe Mr. Sars, uh could be a kind of the honor, if we want to do this, maybe you should go to the exec finance and talk to the members to make your, try to make your point maybe, I don't know. That's just an idea. Well, that's actually. Unless you want Doc as your quote liaison there. No, this is, I mean, that's why we have the project initiation um, process is that it requires the department head and and the support of their department to go forward to put together the argument the numbers the case the causes for why we need as a county to invest in this effort and i think if there's a you know if we're able to show um that through this program and i don't know how we would show it but if we could even speculate that through having this position we somehow increase 4-h participation which then increases perhaps revenue because the 4-h I, I like i'm just trying to say like i'm yep, sure yep. that does drive some things because when committees and teams get together there's usually community spending going on and other things like that that we we really need to be able to bring that dollar amount into something that's a bite size yeah well, and I could say it would definitely increase my capacity to offer more programs because um, within the past couple of years, the state has added a lot of administrative work. And with our support staff in Jackson County not being willing to help me with that, and then there is stuff that I can't give Tammy because it's only accessible through the state logins. Like for charters, for example, I have to log, I have to put them into a SharePoint drive. Tammy doesn't have access to that, or else I would give it to her, and Tammy would definitely help me with that. But there's things that, if I can take that off my plate, I can focus on bringing in bigger and better programs to the county so that we can increase membership. Because I know that that's where we're struggling right now, is I am at my capacity limit for programming, and I can do more. But I also know that, I mean, as a new mom and as a, a young adult who also likes to live outside of work, I don't necessarily have the ability. I don't think there were, at least for me, I'm not arguing that this isn't a good idea and oh, that yeah. I see the benefit of it. When I put on this hat, I'm all like, yep, absolutely, let's do it. When I put on my board hat and I have to ha talk about taxes and other things <laughs> like that and other competing, uh, you know, priorities, I'm, I, it's, I'm not sure that it would be on the top. Um, and I, uh, Don, the benefit of actually having an economist in this position is they get that. I get that. Um, so it is up to me to make an argument, yeah. to demonstrate that there is a greater return on this investment than just, you know, this minute extra tax per individual. Um, I mean, I have to sell it. I definitely support working towards selling it, yes. And, and that's really what I wanted from you is, if, is whether you thought this was worth, worth making the shot. You know, not, not, there, that doesn't guarantee success at all. But if I don't ask, it won't happen. our vice chair of the executive finance is going to make you really he's going to ask believe me he's oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah yes i do think it's worth pursuing what about the rest of you no i definitely do i i know we're always looking at talking about um revenue you know it's like i don't want to put revenue on kids i don't want to do this but we like we we're just talking on, on our meeting and i supported 100 percent of okay look I'm going to throw it out there, towers. I mean, if we can make one tower every year for our sheriff's department to say, hey, we, can we make revenue off this tower? Let's just concentrate on this. Make revenue, then that, that pays for that. So what can we do in all of our departments to say to make revenue? And that's including every one of them mm -hmm. to where if we're going to spend this money, how can we get it back? Not just in knowledge and not just in um, 
I guess you'd say not just in support or trying to keep these kids off off the bad side, you know, keep them on the right direction. Prison. But we need to see how we can, you know, even if it's a little bit of funds here and here and here for each thing they do, p parents are willing to do it if it ain't going to break them and it's going to put those kids somewhere in a good spot. So, yeah. I mean, that's just something we got to look at. So I definitely support the idea, 100%. 100%. Well, I know it's going to be a hard pitch, but we're going to follow the project initiation and the budget cycle because there ain't no way we're pulling it from the general fund this that's, year. That's good to know. But like I'm saying, especially with that vice chair, you better. I better have a clean, <laughs> tight proposal. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any other questions, concerns, anything we might want to put on the agenda for two months? All right. Um, how about the next meeting? What are we looking at for that? August 15th. August 15th. Okay. And uh, one of the. Would you say the 16th? 15th. 15th. One five. Um, it's uh, Thursday. It would be a Tuesday. 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 Is it Tuesday? Aug yeah, it's August. Yeah. And we're doing the 8:30 point, right? Yeah, that would work. Work for me. I like it. Okay, 8.15, 8.30. And uh, I believe one of our primaries will be budget, right? Yep. Budget. Like fun. Yeah. Yay! It? All right. It looks like we can adjourn this meeting at 10.04 a.m.